Bronx drill is one of the hottest new waves in hip hop. Young rappers from the Bronx are popping off and running up millions of views, but there's a ton of competition at the top. Back in 2020, Hayfox started running up massive numbers and was on his way to taking over the whole movement. But then, he allegedly murdered someone in broad daylight and he's been locked up ever since. Then just when fans thought he might beat the case, the feds came through and hit him with a massive RICO indictment. It's a wild story all around. And today, we're breaking down how K-Flock went from being the king of Bronx drill to facing life in prison. Let's get right into it. K-Flock came up in a part of the Bronx called Savside and reps a set that uses the same name. Back in the day, he wanted to become a pro athlete, but it didn't take long for him to switch directions and get active in the streets. Flock didn't even want to be a rapper back then, but he acted like a hype man for his homies B-Love and Dougie B who were trying to make it in the industry. Eventually, Dougie B convinced Flock to hop in the booth, but nobody expected what happened next. Flock dropped his first track in May 2020, then followed it up with a couple of collabs with his homies. In August 2020, he released Is You Ready and Being Honest, and both tracks ran up over a million views. Flock was only rapping for a few months, but he was already one of the hottest new artists in the city. But just like Chicago Drill back in the day, it's more than just music in the Bronx. Almost every rapper in the drill scene is also gang affiliated, and street politics ended up getting brought into the music. Shy E.K. and Edot Baby were both coming up around the same time as Flock. Edot repped the OYs, while Shy put on for the OGs. Both of them were cool with Flock and a lot of other dudes from Seth's side. But then, Edot was caught chilling with Flock's ops and everything changed. Edot was blowing up after his track Ready For War wrecked up millions of plays, and a crew called Structure wanted to link up with him. But at the same time, Structure was cool with RPT, a set that beefs with Seth's side. According to rumors, Edot went to a party with Structure, and when he showed up, some dudes from RPT was already there. Flock and Seth's side had issues with them, but obviously Edot didn't feel like crashing out over a beef he wasn't involved in. So he just kicked it with Structure and RPT that night. Edot might not have thought it was a big deal, but that's not how Flock took it. They had been cool for a minute, but after Edot was part of RPT, Flock considered him an op forever. It also caused a split between Shaw and K Flock, cause Shaw was still rocking with Edot. A lot of people think most of the violence going on in the Bronx right now can be traced back to the night Edot chilled with Structure and RPT. Flock and Edot started sending disses back and forth, which just turned the situation up even more. On the track clicking, Flock said, Why are these is actors? I shoot like the Raptors, gang in the back, and they blitz like the Packers. You don't shoot like Kobe, you play for the Lackers. And Edot clapped back with the track called Geek and said, like, no, I don't play for the Lackers. Like, I'm a gangster taking them risks. Seth, Sai K, all that shit to my dick. But while Flock was going after his old homies and allegedly sparking a huge wave of violence, he was also blowing up in the mainstream at a fast pace. In October 2021, he linked up with Lil TJ and Fabio Foreign on the track Not In The Mood, which hit number 61 on the Billboard Hot 100. He kept it pushing in November and dropped his debut mixtape and was named Hip Hop Rookie of the Month by Billboard. Flock wasn't just popping off in New York, he was looking like the first Bronx drill artist who could take over the whole game. But unfortunately, he didn't leave the streets behind and his beef with E-Dot was getting worse by the day. Both sides had their homies jumping into the beat. Then, in December 2021, Hayflock allegedly killed Edot's friend Waka outside of a barber shop in the middle of the day. When the police reports first broke, they said Hayflock spotted Waka in the barber shop and decided to check him. He opened the door and asked Waka what he was looking at. Then Waka walked over to him and they started fighting. According to the initial reports, Flock turned around to leave, then spun back around and shot Waka in the neck and back. The cops released a photo of the shooter that was caught by a surveillance camera. In the photo, you can see a dude rocking a Montclair coat, a Mary jeans, and a pair of Jordans that hadn't even been released yet. At first it looked like Flock threw on a bunch of designer and went out looking for problems, but then footage came out that proved the cops' original report was completely wrong. Surveillance footage leaked online that showed Flock walking past the barbershop without stopping or saying anything to someone inside. After he went by, Walker came out of the shop and started following him. It's not clear what happened next because the shooting wasn't captured by the camera, but obviously the cops had the situation twisted. Block turned himself in on the murder charge, but his legal team is helping him claim that it was self-defense. Block is known for being a wild dude who isn't afraid to crash out, but in this case, it looks like Waka might have been the one who started the issue and ended up getting killed over it. We'll find out more after the trial starts, but Waka's murder ain't the only case Block's gonna have to fight. Back in December, Block's fans got some good news about the murder case. Someone on TikTok posted a jail call with him where he said, Even though flock has been locked up for over a year, his name never fell off in the industry. In April 2022, he released a collab with Dougie B, Bory 300, and Cardi B called Shake It. Linking up with Cardi B was massive for Flock, and it took his career to the next level even though he was behind bars when it dropped. It looked like if Flock could beat the murder charge, then he would come out and still be at the top of the game. Fans also thought Flock scored a huge win after he hired Jeffrey Lichman to be his lawyer. 
Lishman is a serious dude in the legal game. He defended El Chapo and John Gotti Jr., so a simple murder case should be a breeze for him to handle. There's a good chance Flock would have walked away from the murder charges, but then everything changed in February. The U.S. Justice Department handed down a RICO indictment that targeted eight alleged members from Sev's side and Third's side, including K Flock. According to the indictment, the two gangs linked up to terrorize the area and were shooting up the city like crazy between 2019 and 2022. Flock's alleged murder of Walk is in the indictment but he also caught new charges for allegedly letting off shots at the Ops in June 2020 and November 2021. Beating the murder is one thing, but it's almost impossible to get out of a RICO unless you snitch. Flock's facing the minimum of life in prison and could even get the death penalty if he's convicted, and it don't seem like the feds have any interest in giving him a deal. Flock's lawyer and a lot of other people think the RICO only happened because the courts knew Flock could get off on the murder case, but they wanted to keep him off the streets. Jeffrey Lishman told XXL, we're not surprised by the federal charges as we've been fighting Kevin's state murder charge for over a year now, and considering the shooting was a clear act of self-defense, it wasn't particularly a strong charge. That it's now being used as a basis for a possible death penalty charge is extraordinary. Even if Flock could beat his own charges, someone almost always flips when it comes to RICO cases. His homie Sticky B hopped on IG and said, the feds already offered a deal and he's staying solid. According to him, he's facing 30 years, but he'd rather take the time than snitch on his homie. Sticky wrote, they said, tell us about Kevin, help yourself. 30 years is a long time. Well, I guess I'll see you in 30 years. But even if Sticky ain't gonna flip, that don't mean someone else won't. Almost everyone in the case is facing life in prison, so it's probably only a matter of time before one of them flips to get a lighter sentence. What's so tragic about this case is how pointless all the death and violence was. A lot of it allegedly started because someone hung out with the wrong people one night. And now, several people are dead and a lot more are facing wild sentences. Hayflock blew up so fast that it seemed like he was guaranteed to become a superstar, but instead of leaving the beef behind and focusing on his career, he threw it all away and might end up getting the death penalty for it. Hopefully other drill rappers learn to walk away when they get the chance, because if they're crashing out in the streets, it's only a matter of time before it catches up. Rest in peace to everyone who lost their lives.